Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining School and Community Prevention, Opportunities for All. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority is led by Dr. Montez A. Sizer, Executive Director. Collectively, we are all directed by our vision, mission, and tenants. Our vision to build a unified Northeast Louisiana where individuals are thriving and reaching their full human potential. Our mission to serve as a catalyst for individuals with mental health, developmental disabilities, and addictive disorders. And our tenants that guide our actions, greater access to services, excellent customer service, and quality, competent care. Again, welcome to School and Community Prevention Opportunities for All with Dr. Avius Carroll, Tammy Washington, and LaTanya Owens. Now questions can be entered via the Zoom chat feature during the entire presentation. Please use this feature to enter any questions you might have about school and community prevention with Northeast Delta Human Services Authority. And now, Dr. Avius Carroll, Director of Prevention and Wellness. Good morning, everyone, and thank you again for participating in this awesome webinar. Before we start the presentation and hear from our wonderful prevention staff, I would like to briefly share some information about our prevention and wellness department. This department operates within a framework that is guided by our agency's mission and vision. The Prevention and Wellness Center's vision focuses on risk and protective factors across the lifespan and how they impact the health of a community. In addition, we acknowledge ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, as a strong contributor to risky behaviors and we put trauma-informed care in the forefront of what we do and create programs that build resiliency among populations. We believe strongly in collaboration and our work is rooted in community-based practices. Our partnerships and ability to work across disciplines and sectors are core to successful implementation and outcomes. We also recognize the influence that built environments play in community and public health. So most of what we do in terms of increasing awareness, providing education, outreach efforts, and screening and referrals are in concert with our partners. Today, you will hear specifically about our prevention programs that are funded with federal block grant dollars. However, before we delve into that, I want to take a minute to discuss our coalition work in our prescription take back days. These are two programs we continually encourage the community to be a part of. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority Opportunity Zone is a community coalition aimed to reducing the prevalence of underage drinking among youth ages 12 through 20 in Franklin and Washita Parish. These parishes were selected based on data from our CCYS survey. And you'll hear a little bit more about that later during the presentation. Coalitions work best when there is diversity and representation. Each sector comes with intimate knowledge about the issues and their impacts on their populations that serve. Here you see a great example of who should be a part of the coalition. Although not part of this model that you see, it's equally important to have community and youth present at the table. Our three coalitions are funded by the Louisiana Partnership for Success Grant. These funds are given to work within the communities and develop programs and strategies to reach our targeted populations and also address those causal factors of underage drinking. If you are interested in joining the Opportunity Zone, which I plead you to be, please contact our office or you can download the form in our chat box and email it back to one of our presenters. Their contact information will be displayed at the end of the presentation. Next are our prescription take back boxes. 
According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health in 2018, an estimated 10 million people ages 12 and older misused opioids, which also included 9 million people misusing controlled prescription pain relievers. This study also disclosed that majority of the abused prescription drugs were obtained from family and friends, often from the home medicine cabinet. Numerous research articles suggest proper storage and disposal of prescriptive drugs is a protective factor against opioid misuse and abuse. We work with local law enforcement to place take back boxes in smaller communities. We also distribute log bags and the Terra bags to seniors and other community members. These items are supplied through our Louisiana State Opioid Response Grant. Prevention and wellness campaigns are a major component in what we do. These campaigns allow us to apply environmental strategies and create community awareness through mass messaging. Here are a few we acknowledge each year. Red Ribbon Week is the largest drug abuse prevention campaign in the nation. Each year they release a toolkit and our office and prevention providers participate by developing messages and creating activities with each year's theme. World Bullying Day. On this day, students, schools, and communities all, all over the world go blue together against bullying and cyberbullying. It also kicks off National Bullying Prevention Awareness Month every October. Not only do we wear blue, we challenge people to exhibit kindness and compassion towards one another especially now as we continue to cope and navigate through this new normal during COVID-19. Orange Ribbon Week is an underage drinking awareness campaign which happens each year in April. The goals of this campaign are to raise awareness of the problems related to underage drinking and to help reduce and prevent the incidence of underage use in age groups 12 through 20, which is also the goal of our Opportunity Zone Coalition. National Prevention Week involves communities in raising awareness of substance use and mental health issues by implementing prevention strategies and showcasing the effectiveness of evidence-based prevention programs. It also promotes the dissemination of quality substance abuse prevention and mental health promotion resources and publications. These campaigns are deeply embedded in what we do here at the Prevention and Wellness Department. The last two events are part of our college initiative. Last football season at ULM, University of Louisiana Monroe, we established a sober tailgating as part of our social norming work. We wanted to offer a place for students to have fun without experiencing the pressures of drinking and also link up with other students who don't drink. This is how we show the norm by building environments for those who have similar interests to see and communicate with each other. Lastly is our social media campaign partnership with ULM and the Pi Sigma Epsilon Zeta chapter for marketing students. Students participated in a social norming campaign against underage drinking by creating billboards, Facebook posts, TV commercials, and sober event campaigns. The winner received $1,000 on behalf of the organization they represented, along with additional promotion of the campaigns by our agency. And in the spirit of campaign recognition, today is the great American smoke out. If you are interested or know someone who is interested in quitting smoking, please call our office at 318-362-3339 and ask for one of our tobacco cessation specialists. As you can see, we are a very engaged group. Now you will hear about our early prevention programs and school-based and community resiliency building programs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. Good morning. Thank you for being a part of this webinar. I am thrilled to be able to briefly share how Northeast Delta Human Services Authority 
is committed to connecting the dots by diligently serving in our academic community. Prevention is golden. The younger the child is, when prevention service is provided to them, the better the outcome. Before we begin, I would like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Tammy Washington, and I am the Early Childhood Prevention Manager here in Northeast Delta. I have more than 10 years of experience working with children in social and emotional learning. With the support from Northeast Delta HSA, I have reached more than 15,000 students within the school districts that we have served in. This requires a lot of training, communication, and support for our teachers. The successful outcome is definitely the reward in all of our hard work. So let's talk about social emotional learning. The Department of Education realizes that strengthening social emotional learning in their students will positively impact a child's ability to focus, learn, and retain information. In light of this information, the state of Louisiana has mandated SEL in our schools. ASPALS is a social emotional developmental teacher training program and curriculum that helps to build the coping and resiliency skills in students. Northeast Delta Human Services has been funding the ALS PAL since 2009. The, um, we also directly serve the educators through training, replenishment of the curriculum materials, observations, and program support. The direct service is a huge benefit for our target audience, which includes students in grades pre-K-3, pre-K-4, and kindergarten. Over the years, the teachers have been amazing at reinforcing the concepts that are learned through daily interactions. These lessons are applied during class time, meal time, recess, and any other time during the school day. The great thing about this program is that the school, the skills pour over into the home and the community. It not only helps the teacher with positive redirection, but it also helps parents and guardians to better connect with their students socially and emotionally. Parents receive more than a dozen special as pals correspondences from their child's teacher throughout the school year. This is material that informs them about what they have learned in the classroom and how to reinforce that learning in the home. This program decreases the need for disciplinary intervention as children gain self-control and coping skills. Sometimes children have the most difficult time articulating their feelings. When they don't have the words to properly communicate, they often demonstrate their feelings through negative behavior. However, through ALS PALS, students are consistently learning how to distinguish between various feelings, how to communicate those feelings, and how to think flexibly through brainstorming exercises. The reward received from this program is that it helps children to cope and be confident in the world around them. The life skills are important to have throughout their lives. And instilling these skills into our children early and consistently, it doesn't promise that the world is gonna be perfect but it gives them the tools to thrive in the world around them. It is a challenge for students to focus and to retain information shared during class time if they have underlying and unresolved problems that exist beyond the classroom. So honestly, the reward of this program is, the, is that the gift is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Rigorous studies have shown that this program prevents an increase in aggression and antisocial behaviors such as hitting and bullying. The impact is even stronger for our high-risk students. So it's even better to hear the testimony shared by our teachers and parents who reap the benefits of seeing their students improve. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority is helping by providing the tools to create safe spaces for children so that their environment is predictable and conducive for their learning and development. 
In this program, students learn everything about how they're feeling, how those feelings affect them physically and how to cope. Students learn how to identify who the trusted adult is in their life so that they can communicate those feelings to that trusted adult. It's up to us as parents, mentors, family members, and educated to, educators to be trusted, nurturing, and caring. Our teachers provide clear norms promoting pro-social, healthy, and appropriate behaviors daily. Since 2009, over 15,000 pre-K to kindergarten students have participated in ALSPAL thanks to funding from Northeast Delta. This year, we are serving students in Jackson and Morehouse Parish. So be on the lookout for ALSPAL possibly being offered in your area soon. There are lots of tools in this curriculum that teachers use to help students and the families. You may remember earlier that I mentioned parent letters. Well, there is more. The curriculum, um, it includes poetry, puppetry, music, photographs, and allograms. Allograms are reward cards that are given to the students when they're caught doing something good. And some examples of this is a teacher may observe a student solving a problem independently or calming down or helping their classmates to calm down as well and doing all these things independently. So that's how they're able to receive an allogram message. And they get to take it home and share it around the school. There are many other ways that a child can receive this reward also. The goal is for the child to learn the many ways to make safe and healthy choices. HSA Prevention and Wellness Services also offer continued education and support for parents guardians, and all other community members who are raising, mentor, and supporting children. The trainings provide additional insight on how to strengthen decision-making and problem-solving for their child. Other skills learned during these training sessions are how to provide clear norms while promoting pro-social, healthy, and appropriate behaviors. Now here's one of our awareness initiatives you may remember Dr. Carroll mentioning earlier. Red Ribbon Week is an alcohol, tobacco, drug, and violence prevention awareness campaign observed annually in the month of October throughout the United States. Our program is intentional in helping to raise awareness and combat the use of tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. Through fun, interactive, and age-appropriate activities, our students understand that tobacco, drugs, and alcohol are not for children. The picture above is a small group of students who, with the help of their teacher, use alphabets to spell out be drug free. A message like this from our little learners can be impactful for all ages, and that includes us as adults. October is National Bullying Prevention Month. Every year, individuals from across the nation and around the world unite with a powerful message that bullying should never be a part of childhood. We have used this opportunity to raise awareness within our schools and across our community. We are fostering resiliency and encouraging our youth to be intentional as they navigate their world. The Buddy Bench Project was created by Kid for Kids. Students are taught that if they notice a peer sitting alone on this bench, to stop and take a moment to make sure their peer is okay and invite them to play or simply hang out with them. Sometimes children have a difficult time making friends and need a little inspiration. So Northeast Delta has placed buddy benches on the ground of several elementary schools throughout our region. We are even able to get our Washington High School student ambassadors to hand paint newly wood crafted benches to be delivered to the elementary schools. These student ambassadors really got involved with helping to promote kindness and support to our little leaders. Earlier, I talked about the rigorous studies or the ALS, for the ALS PALS program. Here are a few findings from those studies. 
Children who participate in ALSPAL are two to five times more likely to improve their use of pro-social, positive social behaviors, um, and um, like sharing, taking turns, using self-control, and solving problems than children who did not participate in the program. Children who do not participate in ALSPAL are two to six times more likely to increase their use of antisocial and aggressive behaviors, like hitting, name calling, bullying, and others than the children who are receiving the ALSPAL. Due to extensive positive research findings, ALSPAL has been nationally recognized as a program that works. ALSPAL has been designated as an effective prevention program by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the U.S. Department of Education, and the U.S. Department of Justice. Now that we have covered information about our major early childhood prevention component, I would like to take a moment and share with you other important prevention programs offering, offered in our middle and high school students. This program is called Signs of Suicide Prevention Program. You will also hear it referenced as SOS. SOS is an evidence-based youth prevention program that has been created specifically for middle and high school students. This program takes a trauma-informed approach to help students understand the symptoms of depression, suicide risk, and how to respond. This program also helps parents, faculty, and staff to be more proactive in addressing mental health issues, encouraging help seeking and connecting students to the appropriate treatment when it's needed. SOS uses peer-to-peer -peer messaging that encourages students to act. Act, acknowledge that you are seeing signs of depression or suicide in yourself or a friend and that it is serious. C, for care. Let your friend know how much you care about them and you, that you are concerned that they need help. And T, for tell. Tell a trusted adult that you are worried about yourself or your friend. Earlier, we spoke about how social emotional learning is a necessity for children to cope and make safe and healthy choices in their environment. As children get older, the need to have tools for coping is the same, but the approach must be different. The strongest risk factors for suicide and youth are depression and substance use. According to the Center for Disease and Control and Prevention, suicide is the second leading cause of death for U.S. children and adolescents ages eight, 11 to 18. The prevalence of depression in youth is on the rise, increasing from 8.7% in 2006 to 11.3% in 2014. SOS is a necessity because depression has been linked to poor school performance, to substance use, feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, and even suicide. As adults and professionals, it is imperative that we provide the prevention and intervention necessary to help our youth to have a better quality of life. Northeast Delta continues to provide access and support to our rural school districts, as well as to the community um, youth serving programs, excuse me. This support comes in the form of training for students, teachers, and parents. They'll receive digital and tangible information that will also be provided. We will make referrals for the youth and families to our clinic. We can't stop at the referrals though. Consistent follow-up and support will be provided to the schools that we serve. These services give hope. The Suicide Prevention Resource Center has designated SOS as a program with evidence of effectiveness based on its in inclusion in SAMHSA's National Registry 
of evidence-based programs and practices. Several case studies identify the substantial impact that science of suicide programs have made on organizations and schools around the world. Multiple researchers have shown interest in evaluating SOS using the gold standard, randomized control trials. So the results of these research studies state this. Students who received SOS training were approximately 64% less likely to report a suicide attempt in three months after training compared with students who hadn't been through the SOS program. More information on various case studies and clinical trials can be found on www.mindwise.org. Thank you for your attention during the segment of our webinar. Now I will pass the torch to my wonderful colleague, Latanya Owen. Thank you, Tammy. Good morning. I am Latanya Owens, Regional Provincial Coordinator with over 10 years experience in community engagement and outreach, over 500 plus hours in professional development. I provide technical assistance and support to our providers. I am currently a provincial specialist in training. As a regional provincial coordinator for Northeast Delta, I serve as a liaison to other departments, our clinic, and the community. Thank you for joining us this morning. As we go through this presentation, please answer any questions that you have throughout the chat, as, and we will answer them at the end. Let's begin. Northeast Delta is a trusted resource of credible information, evidence-based programs, and guidance. We develop and create services and activities to meet the community behavior, physical, mental, and social health needs. Northeast Delta is a data-driven agency. The Prevention Department utilizes the Cary Community Youth Survey as a main resource to help determine which evidence-based programs are needed to address, reduce, and or eliminate the onset of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. The Karen Community Survey is designed to access students' involvement in a specific set of problem behaviors, as well as their exposure to a set of risk and protective factors. The risk and protective factors have shown to influence the likelihood of academic success, student school dropout, substance abuse, violence, and delinquency amongst youth. For example, Children who are in disorganized, crime-ridden neighborhoods are more likely to be involved in crime and drug use than children who live in safe neighborhoods. Protective factors identified through this survey include strong bonding of family, school, community, and peers, healthy beliefs, and clear standards of behavior. The CCYS is conducted every two years in grades 6, 8, 10, and 12. In 2018, we had a 99% participation rate in Northeast Louisiana. A total of 563 schools across Louisiana participated in this survey. In our region, 8,606 out of 16,230 students were surveyed, so about half. Adolescent risk behavior is participating in activities that may cause physical, or mental harm, such as unintended injuries, exposure to violence, sexual risk behaviors, and health consequences, such as unintended pregnancies and sexually transmitted disease, tobacco, alcohol, and illicit substance use. Risk factors linked and linked problem behaviors are substance use, depression and anxiety, school dropout, delinquent, violence, and teen pregnancies. Some studies suggest that substance use, violence, suicidal behaviors are related to their friends, social, substance use, deviance, and suicidal behavior. To combat this, we actively work with our youth through our program efforts and create a culture of social norming by fostering environments for youth to engage in pro-social activities. We have developed programs to create protective factors and also pro social activities, programs such as our Student Ambassador Program, SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions, Student Focus Group, and our Annual Youth Summit. 
Our student ambassador program was piloted at Wiseman High School in 2018 with 23 students under the leadership of Dr. Eric Davis. We currently are in four high schools, Wiseman High School, Neville High School, General Trash High School, and Franklin Parish High School. Students have to be nominated by a faculty or a staff. Interviews will be scheduled once applications are received. All planned activities will be led by student ambassadors once approved. Student ambassadors will have many opportunities to earn community service hours by participating in various activities throughout the year. If any seniors are selected to become student ambassadors and earn 30 or more hours of community service, they will be recognized at awards day slash class night. Our vision is to unify communities through positive influence and fostering healthy lifestyles. We do this by conveying and supporting our youth and exposing them to leadership opportunities and team building exercises. Each year, our mission is to create environments for our youth to ex be expressive, creative, and impactful. We do this through partnerships, our relationships with schools, and funding through our grant program. We do hope to, to secure more community funding in the near future. We have received funding from Omicron Iota Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Student ambassadors monthly meetings are held during their lunch period. We do provide lunch to the students to ensure that they do not miss lunch. We consider this to be a treat because we have served Captain D's, Subway, pizzas, and food from a local grocery store in Lake Providence. During meetings, we discuss upcoming activities and events. We often have guest presenters. Here we have Ms. Raven Owens, Ms. Laura Spencer, and our very own Dr. Avis Carroll with the Omicron Myota Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority implementing the college application process, also known as the CAP program. During this meeting, money management was discussed. Students were able to understand the importance of finances, savings accounts, and the do's and don'ts of student loans. During the month of February, student ambassadors participate in a readathon and read to local elementary schools. These types of activities count towards community service hours needed to maintain their participation. Student ambassadors adopt a feeder school to do volunteer work and assist with tasks such as campus cleanup and end of the year celebration. We believe it is important for young kids to see positive role models and acts of kindness demonstrated by older teens. We cultivate the year with an end of the year retreat. This opportunity is for student ambassadors who complete 30 or more hours of community service. Activities and events students can participate in the community to earn hours but are not limited to are the Black Heritage Parade, the Dragon Boat Race, job shadowing, quarterly focus group, agency plays, and of course, our provision campaigns. Bully Prevention Day, Red Ribbon Week, Orange Ribbon Week, National Prescription Take Back, and other agency sponsored events. The goal of this retreat is to enrich the lives and relationships of the group, provide an atmosphere consistent with building confidence, self respect, leadership, and character, encourage bonds within the group, and positively impacting people's lives. In this video, you will see student ambassadors participating in team building exercises. Each exercise builds on trust, leadership, and their ability to follow instructions. Another initiative is our mini grants. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority offer mini grants to qualify schools within our catchment area. The mini grants were developed for students to produce public service announcements aim to build youth awareness around serious problems and health risks associated with underage alcohol use, tobacco use, prescription drug use, and the impacts of suicide, bullying, cyberbullying, and general violence. 
five hundred to a thousand dollar grants were rewarded to were awarded by Northeast Delta HSA from federal funds through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and the Center for Substance Abuse and Prevention, also known as SAMHSA and CSAP. These partner grants build awareness and education around underage, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. The first and second place winner were Richwood Middle School and Wiseman High School in 2017. Richwood Middle and Old Grove High School first and second place, respectively, in 2018. Here's a video of the 2018 first place submission, Richwood Middle School. The Northeast Delta Human Services Authority Opportunity Zone hosted its 2017 Youth Summit on Saturday, September the 23rd at Wiseman High School. Students ages 13 through 18 were invited to participate in educational workshops that covered topics such as college preparedness, addiction awareness, social media, violence in the community, as well as leadership. Over 160 students and volunteers were on hand for the day's activities, which included lunch, a live DJ, and panel discussion, in addition to the educational session. Students were thrilled to have the opportunity to connect and share their experiences with other students and community leaders, as well as take part in dis discussions concerning the availability of employment for youth in the community, substance abuse, peer pressure, and opportunities for leadership. The culminating event of the day was a live panel discussion led by facilitator Jamie Mays, who was joined on stage by our executive director, Dr. Montez Sizer, Mr. Jared Fremont, and Wiseman Student Body President. The panel discussion focused on leadership opportunities for youth while also encouraging youth to seek positive, creative outlets. Students released blooms at the end of the event to signify their commitment to the health to healthy and positive living. The core foundation of prevention and the work that we do lies with the principals and the six Center for Substance Abuse Prevention, also known as CSAP strategies. These strategies were developed and approved by the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration, also known as SAMHSA. The first strategy, information dissemination. This strategy provides awareness and knowledge of the nature and extent of alcohol, tobacco, and drug use, abuse, and addiction, their efforts on their effects on individuals, families, and communities. It also provides knowledge and awareness of available prevention programs and services. These examples of activities conducted and methods used for this strategy include, but are not limited to the following, information resource center, resource directory, media campaigns, brochures, radio and TV public service announcements, speaking engagements, health fairs, health promotion, and information lines. The next strategy is education. This strategy involves two-way communication and is distinguished from the information dissemination strategy by the fact that the interaction between the educator slash facilitator and the participant is the basis of this activity. For example, classroom and small group sessions of all ages, 
parenting and family management classes, peer leader and helper group education program for youth, children of substance abuse group. The third strategy, alternatives. This strategy provides for the participation of target populations in activities that exclude alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. Examples are drug free dances and parties, youth and adult leadership activities, community drop in centers, community service activities. The fourth strategy is environmental. This strategy establishes or changes written and unwritten communication community standards, codes, and attitudes, thereby influencing incidents and prevalence of abuse of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs used in the general population. For example, the promoting establishment or a review of alcohol, tobacco, drug use policies in schools, technical assistance in community to maximize law enforcement procedures governing availability and distribution of alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use, modifying alcohol and tobacco advertising practices and product pricing strategies. The fifth strategy is community-based process. This process aims to enhance the ability of the community to more effectively provide prevention and treatment. Examples are community and volunteer training, neighborhood action training, training of key people in the system, staff official training, systematic planning, multi-agency coordination and collaboration, assessing services and funding, community team building. The final strategy is problem identification and referral. This strategy aims to add identifying identification of those who indulge in illegal aid inappropriate use of tobacco or alcohol and those individuals who have indulged in the first use of illicit drugs in order to assess their behavior to see if it can be reversed through education educational services for tobacco alcohol and drug use disorder example employment assistance program student assistance program driving while under the influence or while intoxicated educational program. Now let's talk about our wonderful prevention providers that work within school districts across Northeast Louisiana to provide evidence-based programs on behalf of NEDHSA. Northeast Delta HSA fully funds and manages these programs. Here are a list of our providers and the areas they serve. West Cal State and drug-free volunteers provide the following evidence-based programs. Life skills, toward no tobacco, positive action, kids don't gamble, want to bet, in West Cal and Richmond Parish schools. Partners in Provision was a 2018 mini grant second place winner. They hosted town hall meetings, partic participate in provincial campaigns, these middle pictures are winners of the door decorating contest at Kibbert High School and the West Cal Drumline. This is a community-based effort. They've also partnered with their local sheriff's office and Walmart to host prescription take-back days. Life Skills Collaboration is our newest provider in Franklin Parish. We contracted with this group based on the data from the Parent Community Youth Survey. They provide life skills and evidence-based program in Winsboro Lower and Upper Elementary, Baskin Middle School, Franklin Parish High School. They also participated in Red Ribbon Week and is a Franklin Parish Coalition member. Goodwill Industries of North Louisiana Incorporation, Sinar. This contract will provide staff and or volunteer youth to provide, to provide compliance checks utilizing a list of retailers provided to them that sell tobacco products within Northeast Delta catchment area. Educational materials are given to the retailers when they attempt to sell to minors and a door sticker saying thank you is given when they check for ID. Contractors 
provide tobacco retailers with information specific to laws and penalties regarding the sale and the purchase of tobacco products for persons under the age of 21. Goodwill partnered with our student ambassador program to hire students to conduct compliance checks. A total of 800 compliance checks will be completed during the contract year. ThinkTrack LLC Center for Counseling and Psychological Resources. ThinkTrack is also another pro new provider in Jackson, Lincoln, and Union Parish, facilitating evidence-based program life skills. They have participated in Red Ribbon Week and is tasked with hosting and participating in community activities in the Fort Mission parishes. As part of my role as Regional Prevention Coordinator, I am the 2019 Com Community Anti-Drug Coalition of America graduate. I am a certified child passenger safety technician and I am the 2018 Child Passenger Safety Hero. The picture to the far right is the first senior student ambassador group displaying their Opportunity Zone Coalition honest cards during awards day at Wiseman High School. These cards were awarded to each student who completed 30 hours of community service. It was a privilege and honor to present them with this token of our appreciation for their hard work and dedication. As you can see, the provincial department is very engaged in our community. In addition, we participate and host health fairs, provide community presentations on bullying, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, serve on community coalitions and work groups, and offer provincial training and webinars for CEUs. To be included in our list serve and receive information on upcoming events and activities and CEU opportunities, please visit our website and sign up to receive emails. This concludes my presentation on provincial services. Thank you again for joining us and we hope that you enjoyed the webinar. Back to you, Alan. Thank you so much, LaTanya and the entire team. As you can see, here is the contact information for Dr. Avius Carroll, the Director of Prevention and Wellness, Tammy Washington, Early Childhood Prevention Services Manager, and LaTanya Owens, the Regional Prevention Coordinator. You can reach any of them via the Prevention and Wellness Office phone line at 318-362-4617. Now we will begin with our question and answer session. We will take questions via the Zoom chat feature. Please use this feature to enter any questions you might have about school and community prevention with Northeast Delta Human Services Authority. If we are unable to address your question today, we will follow up via email as soon as possible. Now, there were some questions that were privately submitted before this webinar began today. And this first question is for LaTanya. Now, LaTanya, how can I start a student ambassador program at my local high school? And does it matter where that high school is located? Okay, so I'll answer the second part first. It does not matter where that high school is located as long as it is in our catchment area which is in Northeast Louisiana. To start a student ambassador program, you first have to identify a student sponsor who would be the liaison between you and our office and the school. This person is essential um, with the program to advise on the conversation between the youth as well as the administrators of the school um, and to get the buy-in from the school administrator. Um, there are a lot of more steps associated with becoming a uh, starting the student ambassador program but again my contact information is available and if anyone would like to reach out to me personally um, i can walk you through those steps in more detail thank you so much latanya the second question that was submitted is actually for miss tammy washington tammy how can parents participate in the al's pals program 
in order to support their child's teacher? Oh, that's actually a very good question. Um, we strongly encourage our parents to get involved. First thing that I would recommend is that you contact your child's teacher to see when it would be appropriate to come and be a part of the Ask Pals lesson. And we know that that's difficult at a time like this, so there's so many other ways. But now due to COVID, um, students are receiving these lessons virtually, so parents are automatically involved because they have virtual access with their child. So also parents should anticipate receiving parent letters routinely from their child's teacher. And these parent letters tell the parents about um, new things that their child is learning in the classroom. And it gives the parent ways to support that learning through talk and interaction. Here's why it is an awesome time for parents to get involved. Most of the time when we uh, talk about feelings, we instantly think about being happy or sad. There's so much more to it and our little learners are getting it. So some of the things that our pre-K students are learning about are what it means, what it means to be disappointed, frustrated, proud, and what to do when they have big feelings. So they are learning fairly big words. Teachers love to have parents involved so that they can be a part of these moments. So finally, at the end of every school year, we send home parent surveys. This is your opportunity to share with us how Alf Pals has impacted your child and your family. The parent's voice is very important in child's learning. And so I, I hope this answers your question, but there's so many ways that you can get involved, even through COVID. Call me or email me and I'll be more than happy to walk you through some more, some other ideas. Thank you so much, Tammy. We appreciate that answer. And we had one final question submitted prior to. Now, no one has yet submitted a question via the Zoom chat feature. So if you'd like to ask your question, please enter that now while we direct this last pre-submitted question to Ms. LaTanya. Now, LaTanya, this person seems to want to know more about becoming a prevention and wellness contractor with Northeast Delta Human Services Authority. How might they do that? So they can visit our website at www.nddeltahsa.org. Click on the contract tab at the top right hand corner. Then click on form, complete the form, which is a simple form and push submit. We will get that information and we'll be in contact with anyone that would like to become a contractor. Thank you so much. And yes, once again, for everyone out there, our website, uh, is available for any resource uh, you might have. And since we have no submitted questions via the Zoom chat feature, thank you everyone for joining us today. Please visit our website at www.nedeltahsa.org and follow us on our various social media handles at NEDeltaHSA. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, building a unified Northeast Louisiana where individuals are thriving and reaching their full human potential.